Hello, ladies and gentlemen of YouTube. I am Clementon, and as always, I am Super Saiyan! But never mind that. I really had no idea at all what to make this video about. So I went down in the doobly doo below, started looking at comments. Something quickly caught my attention. Benjamin Fowler said, I wonder how a neodymium magnet wrapped with the wire like a lipstick pickup would sound. Like the magnet used as the bobbin or however they did them. And that's actually a pretty good suggestion. But then Andrew Garcia said, Like a Dan Electro that just smokes some meth and wants to find someone to fight. <laughs> Get him some milk! <laughs> so I knew I had to do this. But then I thought back to a, another comment. Kenneth McCall had talked about making a pickup using shell casings as the pole pieces, which is still a great idea and I'd still like to do that. But my brain clicked and I said, in this video, we're gonna take a neodymium magnet and a shotgun shell, and we're gonna do some gluing, and some taping, and some soldering, and some winding, and some winding, and some winding, and some more taping. A little bit of wax potting, chuck it in the testimule guitar, grab some pedals, and see how that works. If this sounds like something you might be interested in, stay tuned, and roll that beautiful bean footage. Well, I knew that this was a job that super glue just wasn't going to cut. So you can see here I'm mixing up a two-part plastic bond epoxy by JB Weld on a piece of cardboard using the little popsicle stick that is included. Then I use said popsicle stick to spread uh, the epoxy on the edges of a 60 by 10 by 3 millimeter 24P N94 neodymium magnet. Otherwise a big brick pack cheap ass neodymium bar magnets from Amazon.com. Com. Then I start sticking on these little pieces of black flat work uh, to build the edges of the bobbin and this is nothing more than the little spacers that come in the brick of magnets so they don't smack against each other and bust and also so you can get them pried apart. Now I'll make sure that's lined up and I gotta just get up and walk away. It's gotta sit. While that's drying I went out in the garden, checked things out. Tomatoes are not ready. Zucchinis look great. Pick some zucchini as well as a basil. Okay, it hasn't been quite 15 minutes, so we'll check to see if this stuff is tacked up enough to handle and mess with, and it is. So I took my little bobbin here and I stuck it in the end of this shotgun shell, and since I had cut the crimp off the end of the shell to make it look pretty and straight on the end, and I figured three inches was enough, nope, it's too short, bobbin sticks out the end. And that's what she said. If only I knew where to get another shotgun shell that does not have the crimp cut off the end. Buy a shotgun. That should just about do it. There we go. That fits perfectly. Now, this is the wire that we'll be using to wind this pickup. It's a 42 gauge poly Remington brand uh, magnet wire. I had a viewer ask about, like, this stuff is thinner than a hair. How do you not break it? And I mean, it is really, really thin. But I want to show you. See, you can, you can pull it, break it, but you can also, like, slip it and stretch it. You just have to learn how to handle it and have a... It's not even really a soft touch with it. You just got to learn to let it slip through your hands. And another thing is lay it in the floor at your feet while you're winding and let it come straight up to your hands and uh that way it can roll off the top and it won't you, you'll never roll this on a an axle it, it'll break it's it's too heavy of a roll as to spool off the top here we got a wire stuck in the helping hands and it's an orange wire it's been stripped this wire come from 1970s tv it's pre tinned real nice stuff it's the orange coated wire when i also have a black coated wire because I want the positive side of the coil in the center so that uh, the outer winds will be negative and act as a Faraday cage around the coil, the magnet, and keep it from humming very bad. So to connect this wire to that little thin magnet wire, I take a piece of it and put it in like a U and just start wrapping it around the wire. Then I wrap it and wrap it and wrap it and wrap it around that piece of thicker wire. And then I take a industrial soldering gun. You don't have to use one of these. I just use one of these because I know it gets really, really hot. Now, now this thing does work off of an electromagnet using an induction to heat the solder tip which is a piece of copper tintu house wiring in this case. Lasts a lot longer than store bought ones and works better. So you don't want this anywhere near your pickup magnet. We'll move the pickup magnet far away. This will demagnetize or otherwise ruin your pickups. Well I get this thing screaming hot and I just hold it on there, hold it on there, keep feeding solder till it gives me a drip. 
then I know I'm good. That's another question I got asked from a viewer is how do you get the insulation off the wire? You can sand it. I've heard that. Uh, I've seen people scrape it with a razor blade. I, as you could see, all that uh, insulation, the polyurethane that's coating the wire, it just all turned to smoke. Give her a tug, she's good and secure. And that's what he said. Okay, now we can place that lead on this bobbin and start wrapping some magnet wire on here. Uh, but this being a metallic magnet, uh, you, you can go ahead and start wrapping the wire on here as long as you put some tape on the lead wire where it's soldered. But over time, as it uh, degrades and some of the poly might get scratched or whatever, the corrosion happens, it, 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 a lot more likely to short out on this metal. So we'll take some tape, cut a little strip, wrap it around there, put the lead on it, do a couple of winds by hand, and then we can uh, tape over the lead. And those first to, you know, 20, 25 winds or so, and then I'll, I'll run the lead out the side here so that it, it can be securely fastened during the real winding. It's not flopping everywhere. Then I'll continue with quite a bit more hand winding. I mean, you could put it on the winder now, just start winding it up, but I really like to do these first, I don't know, 7,500 by hand. Watch it, look at it, make sure I'm getting everything on there secure and packed down. I do apologize for the focus. I know it's out of focus. Uh, I've used 1960s uh, manual lenses and I haven't used this camera in a long time. Here we got our winding machine, which is actually a sewing machine with a piece of wood stuck to it. If you are familiar with my channel, you know I've gotten some awesome pickups off of here. Just gonna stick me a piece of double-sided tape on the back of the pickup bobbin, smack it up there, start spinning it. And you can see I don't have a traverse bar or anything, and I just like concentrate on that wire and move it back and forth. Do my traverse back and forth. Feel the tension. How's it bouncing? How's it pulling through my hands? I'll stop every so often to check out my progress, see if I'm winding too much on one side or the other side. When I was doing that, I would take the time to move the camera to a little bit of a different position so you could see another angle. People seem to want to see pickup winding, but really it's boring as hell unless something goes wrong. And you can see how tiny this bobbin is. This very low count wine right here. Uh, I don't know how many. I don't I don't count wines. I just go until my heart says I'm, I'm done or until I run out of bobbin. And this one's pretty small because that had to fit down in there and I just used those two pieces of plastic I already had. I could have probably went a little bit bigger, got a little bit more wines on it. I think that would actually been good, but you'll see it worked out just fine. With all this strong of a magnet, it would be my idea to go down a little in wine. I, I, I tend to try to underwind the adimium uh, because of magnetism's magnetism but and, and strength of field but for whatever reason neodymium seems to make a base a lot of base response you'll see this pickup's not bright at all and with as low of a wine count as it has you would figure it would be super bright and alnico versus ceramic would also make you think well stronger is brighter it should be super bright well either way i tried to make a prediction on here i, I remember i i held my fingers up at some I'll try to find that and slow it down. This is all sped up because it takes a long time to wind a pickup. Let me place a number on the screen of what my prediction was. All right, now it's time to untape the wire and take off the bobbin. That is a hell of a lot of wire for a pickup that small. It felt like it was gonna just like explode and all roll off the sides. Now we can go ahead and uh, break the magnet wire. Go ahead and wrap it around this uh, negative lead. Move that pickup magnet far away, which I don't know how much it matters with neodymium. I do know that it will uh, destroy an Alnico magnet, but either way, solder that up. Thus led. Then we can tape up the lead, wrap it around the coil, tape it on twist up those wires to hold them securely then i started running strips of tape sideways to hold the coil in and it, normally i would i would wrap the pickup in a like an embroidery thread like a cotton string same as a telecaster pickup but with this uh it's gonna be inside of a case so it just needs to be held together long enough for me to get it in there and get it secured so i cut a strip and then i wrapped around the outside and stuck it in the shotgun shell this is just temporary actually i just want to make sure it fits and this fat boy was a pretty tight fit Okay, so here's supposed to be the video of me testing the resistance of the pickup, but the video's gone. There's the one before it and the one after it. So please excuse the continuity error here and uh, the bad lighting. I went and grabbed the camera out of the bag, I turned it on, battery was about dead. I took the meter, hooked it up to the guitar really quick. There you go, 2.1, 2.09 technically, but hey, I guess 2.3, that's pretty damn good. And also absolutely that's very low wine count for a normal pickup, but that is a lot of magnet 
really close to those wines. So plugged up the old uh, crock pot full of soy wax because this is probably the most microphonic pickup I've ever had my hands on. I thought about how I was going to dip this in there and how it's going to get covered with wax and all that. So I just took a little ladle that my wife uses to like measure glitter for doing nails. And before it was even fully melted in the crock pot, I just started ladling it inside of the pickup or the, the shotgun shell. Let that harden and then I decided to take some double sided tape and a little block of wood and stuff. Figure out my height and stick it down in the testing mule guitar while it was plugged in. Strum a little bit. It, it, it uh, liked to be in a certain orientation which ended up with the uh, the label on the shotgun shell being a little bit more toward the neck. What really seemed to be going on is that it, it liked for the wines to be closer to the front instead of that uh, flat work. So it was like the opposite of a pickup that has pole pieces in it. Now we're pretty much ready to see how that works. So pedal wise we got a cheap uh, clon clone, we got a octave fuzz, knockoff tube screamer, and a uh, Digital reverb. You're gonna hear like a cocked wall sound, like very mid-range honky. That's just this pickup. Uh, it's going into the same keyboard amp I used to do all my demos. Amp is as normal and neutral as a PA. So without further ado, you'll see it. It, it, it does not at all sound like a crazy like somebody on meth that wants to fight. <laughs> It's got a Plus, 
tube screamer and, and reverb. It's a very good demo, but it's there. You can hear the pickup. Well, guys, that just about does it for this video. I had some rusty guitar playing. And hopefully you sat through the crazy part to get to the pretty part. I mean, it kind of was my duty to try to make it sound like a Dan Electro on meth that wanted to fight. Either way, if you found this entertaining or educational in any way, please like and maybe subscribe. I am Clementine. You've been watching Heavy Metal ATC. Till next time! My shotgun.